Here we're asked to graph the following exponential functions on the same set of axes. We've got three functions here. The first one in orange is y equals 2 to the power of x. The second one in green is y equals 1 to the power of x. And the third one in pink is y equals half to the power of x. Well, the reason we're going to do this exercise is to figure out how, different, how exponential functions look when we have different bases for the exponents. Now, we've, as a quick review of exponential functions, an exponential function takes the form y equals b to the x, where b is some constant greater than 0. However, depending on what b is, we get graphs that look quite dissimilar from one another. And in particular, we get three broadly different types of graphs. We get a, a one graph where b is between 0 and 1. When we get b equals 1, we get another different graph. And when b is greater than 1, we get a different graph again. And so we're going to try and examine what the behavior of each one of these graphs is by graphing these three exponential functions. So to construct the graph of each one of these functions, what we're going to do is we're going to examine five x values. So we're going to draw up a table of values and we'll examine five different x values. Those x values are minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two. Just to get an idea of what it looks like. And let's begin with this first one in orange. So we'll put y up here. What we're gonna do is we're going to input each of this, these x values into this equation and see what the corresponding y variable is. So at x equals minus two, we get y equals two to the power of minus two. Well, as we know, whenever we have something to um, the minus two, let's, let's just remind ourselves up here. Whenever we have a to the power of minus one, then this is one over a. And whenever we have a to the power of minus two, this is one over a squared. These are our indice laws. So here, when we have two to the power of minus two, this is going to equal one over two squared. Two times two is four, so this is gonna be one over four. Okay, what about x equals minus one? At x equals minus one, we get two to the power of minus one. So by our indice laws, this is one half. At x equals zero, we get two to the power of zero. And this is anything to the power of zero. Let's write this indice law up here. So a to the power of zero equals one by our indice laws. So this is going to be one. Two to the power of one is just equal to two because anything to the power of one is just itself. And two to the power of two is four. So let's graph these points on this graph. So we've got x equals minus two, y equals a quarter. So that's going to be two units left at the origin and a quarter units up, about there. It's going to be our first point. Here, x equals minus one, y equals half. That's going to be this point. x equals zero, y equals one. It's going to be this point. x equals one, y equals two. It's going to be this point. And x equals two, y equals four. That's going to be, be this point. So this should, this should look a, a little familiar to you. So our graph here, our exponential graph is going to look something like this. So we're going to get an asymptote here. This, this, this left-hand side is going to, as, as x gets very, very large and negative, we're going to have y gets closer and closer to zero, but never, never reaches y equals zero. Whereas here, this, these y values will shoot up for small increases of x on this right-hand side of the graph. Okay, so we've now graphed y equals two to the power of x. What about y equals one to the power of x? Let's do this here. Let's do our corresponding y values here. Okay, well, let's quickly review our indice laws. Whenever we have one to the power of something, so let's say one to the power of c, that always equals one, no matter what we what value we substitute for c. Given this law, we're going to have y equals one to the power of x here. So at x equals minus two, we're going to have one to the power of minus two. Well, one to the power of anything is one, so it's going to equal one. Similarly, for x equals minus 1, we're going to have 1 to the power of minus 1, which is going to also equal 1 by this law. At x equals 0, we're going to have 1 to the power of 0, which is equal to 1. I think we can see a pattern here. Here we're going to have 1 to the power of 1, this equals 1, and we're going to have 2, sorry, we're going to have 1 to the power of 2, 
this is also going to equal 1. In other words, no matter what x value we substitute in for this function, we're going to have a y value equal to 1. So let's plot these points. We've got x equals minus 2, y equals 1. That's going to be this point here. x equals minus 1, y equals 1. x equals 0, y equals 1. x equals 1, y equals 1. x equals 2, y equals 1. So this is going to be a straight line. This is going to be the line y equals 1. Or another way of writing this is y equals 1 power of x. Let's label this orange one as well. This was y equals 2 to the power of x. Right, so here we can see that when b equals 1, when b equals 1, we're going to get a straight line like this. And that straight line is going to be always going to be the line y equals 1. So if ever you face a function y equals 1 to the power of something, it's always going to be this straight line that passes through the y-axis at the y value of 1. That's a, that's a really interesting property of exponential functions. And notably, this only happens, we only get a straight line for the specific value b equals 1. Okay, let's fill out this last one. So here we've got y equals half to the power of x. Let's go for it. Let's write y in pink here. So here we're going to have uh, y equals half to the power of x. So here x is equal to minus 2. So we're going to have half to the power of minus 2. Well, another indice law, which is useful to consider here, which is pretty much the, the inverse of this indice law, is that if we have ever have 1 over a all to the power of minus 1, this just equals a to the power of minus 1, or simply a. Conversely, if we ever have 1 over a to the power of minus 2, again, by the indice law, we can get rid of this minus if we, uh, if we just look at the inverse of what this is, so a squared. So 1 over a to negative 2 equals a squared. That's a fundamental indice law. So here, we're going to have a half to the power of minus 2 by this indice law is going to equal 2 to the power of 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So at x equals minus 2, here we're going to have y equals 4. What about x equals minus 1? At x equals minus 1, we're going to have half to the negative 1 by our indice law up here. That's going to be 2 to the power of 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. At, at x equals 0, we're going to have y equals half to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So here at x equals 1, we're going to have half to the power of 1. Anything to the power of 1 is just that thing itself, so this is going to be half. And here we're going to have half to the power of 2, because x equals 2. Half to the power of 2, that's half times half. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, so half times half is a quarter. Let's plot these points. So here we have x equals, x equals minus 2 and y equals 4. That's associated with this point. Here we've got x equals minus 1, y is 2. x equals 0, y is 1. x equals 1, y is a half. And at x equals 2, y is a quarter. Let's connect up these dots. So we're going to get a function that looks like this. So one interesting observation we can make here is that this pink function is the same as this orange function if it were to be reflected in the y-axis. That's very interesting. Uh, the, other, the other interesting things we've got here is that on the right-hand side, instead of shooting up, we actually have a function which gets closer and closer to y equals zero as x goes to infinity. So as x goes to infinity here, y goes to 0. Whereas on the left-hand side of this portion of this graph, this pink graph tends to shoot up for decreasing marginal values of x. So in other words, it's, it's in some ways the opposite of this y equals 2 to the x. Instead, we've got y equals half to the power of x. 
that's a really interesting property of curves, of exponential functions, where the base of the exponential function is between 0 and 1. All other functions where we've got b is greater than 1, they're going to resemble our traditional exponential function that on the right hand side shoots up and on the left hand side tends to 0. But if we have a b here, a base which is between 0 and 1, that's going to have the opposite. On the right hand side it's going to tend to 0 and on the left hand side it's going to shoot up.